got this involute that I'm setting up and getting ready to I got to bore this inner the center diameter out and that's where the seal ring presses in and it's pretty heavily corroded so we need to put a fresh bore in there and I'm getting this thing set up and indicated and I want to show you my setup here I'm using the, the Starrett 196 back plunge and I've made a couple modifications on mine the rods that come with it I've got the bottom end turned a quarter inch and for whatever reason all the snugs that I have it just seems like you can't ever get the right combination to hold this stuff together so I've got mine modified where I can put it in that snug and then have it set up and we're going to use this to get the face indicated. I've already been doing a little bit because it takes a little while to get this thing trued up. On the bottom end I've done some shims like this back here on these angle plates to get the top and bottom really really close but I've still got to get side to side and I was showing you what I'm doing. I've got this really neat clamp over here that I've showed in one of the video. And I'm using this, this uh, clamp to actually push this angle plate forward because this side's low. The side's high, this one's low. And I'm using that to actually push it this way. Now, I don't have to go far. I think I'm about maybe five thousandths. We'll see where we're at here. That's minus. Got that minus three there. All right, and then I'm plus. Let me get. Uh, it looks like about six or six or seven thousandths plus. So I'm gonna come back over to this side. And let me show you my little plant. What I'm talking about here. So here's the vice that I'm talking about. This is the moving one. There's another one that looks just like it that is uh, fixed. It's still up on the shelf. So I've got this thing bolted down. And what I'm doing is I'm adjusting it here. All right, and I turn this, it's gonna push this. It's gonna push all that that way. I've got these pulled down tight and I'm gonna use this to push it that way and just, just barely tweak it so that I can get the side to side indication close. Okay, so let's tweak it a little bit. We can give it a check. Still got a little ways to go. Not not much. Okay, zero. We're still a little high over there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It looks like maybe about four, four thousandths. I think that's going to be pretty close. That looks like one over there. All right, so top and bottom, I'm getting two thousandths. And then side to side, I actually bumped this a little bit with the nylon hammer. I got one thousand side to side and two thousandths up and down. So we're going to leave it where it's at and go with it. So here's my next indicating setup and I'm just trying to find the center of this hole right here. This should be, it was, it was originally machined because this is where your C-face adapter mounts up for your electric motor. So everything should be centered on this part right here. It's just got a lot of corrosion. So I'm gonna center it up here 
And then I'm gonna check in here with the indicator as well and see how close it is to that and compare it, kind of go from there. So this is one of my indicators off of the, uh, the base, the Starrett, that's got the uh, T-slot base, like an inspection indicator stand is what it is. And I'm using it to indicate this ID. I got a wide radius tip on the end of it there to kind of skate across the, the corrosion pits. We'll get it kind of equalized. It's jumping around, but we're really close. So I'm just going to tweak that in a little bit more, get the camera out of my way. And then we'll go in there and check that other one there. Right after I did my indicating here, I went in there and I indicated that. It's just really hard to see on the camera there, but I used a, a test indicator and it looked like that it was bouncing around within five thousandths of being what I had it indicated out here. So I've gone in there with my a tool bit, my boring bar, and I've rotated it around till it touch, and I've tweaked the um, the Y and the Z axis here to allow that thing to where it's just touching all the way around with that tool bit there, and I'm talking like two thousandths each way. So it was really, really close. So I'm gonna leave the, I've got the table locked where it's at. We're gonna board that thing to, right there. I had to switch the bar out to a different bar because I couldn't, I couldn't get in there deep enough where that shoulder is because of the, the position of the tool on the very end. So I found this bar that the tool is almost flush with the end of the bar, it's sort of an open slide on the end of it. All right, and I'm establishing my shoulder right now. pretty good right there I think we're gonna we're just gonna um, call that I got a Mac base down here that I'm gonna zero out I got a little help from the uh, pelican here really all I want to do is just clean that bore up have a nice clean board that I can get a good size on that's all we're doing so I dialed it I, I moved the face chuck over 15 thousandths which will end up taking 30 thousandths out of it so i'll make that pass there to the shoulder and then inspect it and see if it's cleaned up if i need to take it some more i will i am using a high speed tool bit uh, it's one that i use for most of my steel applications but it works fine on cast iron too so we'll see I'm just running low and slow here i'm not in a big hurry see what it does the board's looking pretty good it, it cleaned up it cleaned up all the way around and I'm actually touching I say half of that face width so I think what I'll do is just we're probably just gonna leave it right there where it's at I'm gonna try to get in here with you Okay, it is seven inches, 500 plus one, so that's 670. Seven inches, 670 thousandths. So we'll machine a ring to fit this that'll press in there. So pretty much took longer to set the thing up and get it true than it did to make the one cut through there. I don't think you, I showed you the back of my setup here earlier, so I'm just showing you that. Use my heavy clamps here to hold it up there. We've got our shims on the bottom side. You can see that one sticking out there. We've got it shimmed on the bottom. And with this being cast iron and these heavy clamps, this is a pretty, this has always been a pretty good setup right here. I don't know if I had mentioned it before. These are some angle plates that I had made up myself. Me and dad actually built those together and they've always worked real good. A lot of these holes in here are from different things that we just ended up drilling it and bolted in the parts to it and fixturing it that way. This is the new impeller that's going into the pump. 
so I have to machine my my bronze ring to fit it. It's actually 718 nominal size. I got it right on. So I just wanted to show you that's what that's what'll be going in there and part of my sizing will go off this this journal right here. There's our bronze stock we're gonna use to make the seal ring. This is a piece of six and a half by nine bronze. This is one of my pieces that I use whenever I'm making the uh, the telescopic packing nuts, the drop piece. It's always important to save all this kind of stuff whenever you you know you get more material or you part stuff off and you get down to a couple inches because sometimes you just need a little narrow piece to, to uh, machine. But <clears throat> it's a lot of material that we got to turn off the OD. But selling the customer one inch of this right here is cheaper than having to buy an entire 13 inch length piece of bronze stock that's the right size to machine after you pay for the material and the shipping so just one inch of this is worth it and something that we do is stock quite a bit of sizing of bronze around here for different jobs that's just part of the job shop atmosphere so anyway we're going to get this thing faced turned and bored and part it off We'll start with that bore, get it roughed out to size. I'll leave it a little bit small and then rough the OD and then we'll go ahead and finish them out. And don't forget on this bronze, you want to use your uh, noise cancellation plugs right here. Protect your hearing. These are quarter inch passes by the way. Using that high speed tool, the one I like. Got the OD tool set, use another high speed tool there. And this is gonna sling a lot of brass, so here's a little tip for you. I'm gonna loosen up that first screw. I'm gonna take a piece of shim stock, and slide it under there. And this, this one works out good because I'm not going all the way up to the chuck there. It's just a little guard that'll help block the chips from slinging up at me here. Let's see how it does. Most of them are going to the right towards the camera there, but it's keeping a few from popping up at me anyway. Nicely honed high speed tool bit, honed with a radius on the tip, light cut with a light feed rate. It'll leave you a nice beautiful finish on this bronze. I'm gonna use that back edge that I'm parting off as the bottom where it presses down in there. So I'm using the file to file a start bevel on there to help align it as it goes in the hole. That's looking pretty good.
got the ring. I've been tapping on it with the uh, rubber hammer there to try to get it started. And what I want to do is use the bore mill as a press here and actually press it in. It's got 5,000 to press. With this being brass and a kind of a thin ring, it shouldn't take a lot of tonnage to, to put it in there. So the lead screw moving the table up against the end of this bar should be enough to press it in there. I got this cast iron plate that's been used for many things. It's like a jig plate. I machined this one step on it there that'll, that'll fit that. Let me get it get it run up and just trying to hold it in. I'm walking it in there. Let's see if we can get it in the rest of the way. No problems. Feels like it squared up pretty good. I had to I had to back off and get it straight and start again. We got it now. That feels like it. Feels like it stopped. I'm gonna back out and inspect it. Alright, I think we got it guys. Alright, now that we got it in there, I want to give it a check with my inside mic and see where it's at. Perfect. That's right where I wanted it at. We got our proper clearance for the impeller to fit in there and not rub. So we're good to go on this one right here. After that last clip that I just showed you there, I moved the, everything out of my way and I got in here and did some more measuring and then I found that I had a, a two thousandths egg shape to the ring. So I brought the bar back in here and touched off and I, I took, we cleaned it back up and then I took an additional three thousandths to uh, bring it to a certain a clearance that they wanted in here so I was able to take basically like five thousandths out of there and it cleaned it up really nice so I just wanted to point that out to you that uh, that was something that we did I didn't get any video of it but I just wanted to point that out so we got her we got her trued back up where we were we had lined it up and we did our boring and I just didn't I just didn't show all that measurement on on video but yeah just pressed it in there kind of warped it about two thousandths or it could have been um, from parting it off and it had warped and I didn't see that but it's been a while since I've done one of these things and really what I should have done is left this ID small pressed it in there and then brought it after we pressed it in just finished it back out and I don't know why I didn't think about that but that's what I'll do next time that I do one of these like this so now <laughs> this one's finished up and I'm going to pull it out of here and uh, then come and pick it up